Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and this is just a quick review of Super Liminal on the Nintendo Switch. This review was originally written by the spectacular Ollie Reynolds and has been adapted for video by me. But anyway, that's more than enough waffling. Let's dive right into things. <laughs> Ever since Valve's iconic puzzler Portal launched back in 2007, we've seen a number of developers put their own spin on the genre including Chroma Gun, The Witness and The Talos Principle. Superliminal is one of the more successful efforts, a mind-bending jaunt into a mysterious facility that turns out to be one of the more surprisingly heartwarming Switch games of 2020. So far at least. At the Pierce Institute, you play as the unidentified participant in the Somnusculpt Dream Therapy program. After signing a terms of service, you're off going from room to room, solving puzzles to unlock the connecting doors, and continue. The gameplay is focused around the concept of forced perspective, a technique that allows objects to appear bigger, smaller, closer, or further away than they may initially appear. For example, early in the game you'll find yourself in a room with an exit located halfway up the wall, well out of your reach, at least by yourself. A small wooden block lies on the ground, only a couple of cubic inches in size, but once you pick up the block you can place it below the exit from a distance, thus utilizing forced perspective. The small block immediately becomes several cubic feet in size, allowing you to jump on top and reach the exit. This is just one of the many ingenious examples of the concept, and it only gets more elaborate as you progress through the game. Though split into chapters that you can access individually from the main menu, the experience can quite easily be completed in one sitting. This may put some people off, but we'd actually recommend playing it this way. The pacing is superb, and and the underlying message at the end will resonate so, so much more. Ollie's not shy about the fact that he played it in one go and was close to shedding a tear at the end. The only downside to a game of this nature is that once you've played it once, a second time around isn't half as intriguing. Whilst the graphics aren't the most cutting edge on the market, everything is so carefully considered that we have to give the developer credit. Every object is placed exactly where it should be, and the lighting is frequently designed to guide you down a specific path, sometimes deliberately down the wrong path as well. The frame rate is solid throughout with only minimal dips to disturb the experience, and the music is extremely well implemented, designed to make you feel at ease despite the strange goings on. Objects can occasionally glitch out as you're moving them around, but thankfully this is a very rare occurrence. Will Superliminal resonate with you as much as it did with us? Well, possibly not, but regardless if you're looking for a game in a similar vein to Portal, you will be right at home here. It is fairly short, so if that's something that bothers you, you may want to wait around and pick this up at a discounted price. Otherwise, you're in for a wholly unique experience that completely stands on its own and delivers a message that, in 2020 at least, is exceptionally powerful. Cover me in eggs and flour and bake me for 40 minutes. Yes, you've reached the end of the review, and that means it's time for Alex's personal thoughts. And overall, I've got to agree with Ollie, I really, really do. I played this game to completion, and yeah, it is a short game, but it is a wild ride whilst you do it. It's one of those experiences that, although it is short, if, if it was longer and sort of drawn out, it, it wouldn't be nearly as interesting. Everything just kind of happens, and everything that does happen has a great sense of purpose to it, and there are a few little bits of exploration that you can do and some mucking around you can do, like changing the size, like I got, I genuinely thought I'd completely screwed myself once with um, this this sort of inflatable, well, this bouncy castle, and you can go in it and it ends up changing your size de depending on the scale and everything like that. I thought I had irreversibly shrunk myself down to an infinitesimal size, um, but I did manage to claw it back, and I did manage to actually complete it without restarting, which was actually very, very satisfying. I didn't experience any major issues with the game. I did once manage 
managed to get a um like an object through one of the doors that's meant to prevent objects and i'd really like to try that again with something like the bouncy castle because <laughs> if i can get that through i'm gonna be laughing it's definitely one of those games that is more of a sort of a quote-unquote experience than it is a sort of a deep and involving game with you know rigorous and you know ultra hardcore mechanics and stuff like that it's really not that it's a very chilled out relaxed game and if you've got an evening spare and you want to try something that's really different and that is really going to uh, catch you for a loop then this is definitely something you should check out even the loading screens mess with you <laughs>